I'm in the village of Middleburg, um, close to Timothy Murphy Park. As we can see, the Schoharie Creek here is a little overflow. Um, some people might say this is the natural state of the creek. Certainly in the spring, uh, during winter, uh, flooding is frequent. So it might not surprise people to know that the word Schoharie derives from uh, basically floodwood. Um, now, possibly from a Mohawk word, uh, Tawasco Shore. Um, what is, was nearby, uh, possibly a mile or so south of here, nearer to Roman's Nose, there are two uh, little creeks that come into the Schoharie Creek. Uh, today they're known as the Line, the Line Creek and the Little Schoharie Creek. They don't come in at exactly at the same spot, but close enough so that when the water flows into the Schoharie, there's a little eddy that happens, that occurs, um, and it kind of causes a dead, dead uh, water area. So a lot of driftwood would accumulate there, and any of the Mohawk or other Haudenosaunee warriors uh, would go by the area, they would notice these large uh, piles of driftwood. And one of the piles was so large that you could actually walk over it and not see water beneath it. Well, the term Tawashohor, or a variation of that, uh, comes from driftwood. A more recent Mohawk uh, linguist uh, was able to determine that it may have meant uh, something to the effect of a suspension bridge. Um, so that's where uh, the word Schoharie is derived from. But of course, this is just one area on the, what we call the Schoharie Creek today. Um, over the years, um, various spellings for Schoharie have uh, appeared, some very colorful, especially in the colonial period, before their standard, standardization of spelling. Um, but it was just one area on the creek. Um, in fact, in at least one document, it was spelled I-K-O-H-E-R-E, -E, Icoere. Um, but generally in the 18th century it was called Schoharie, and then as soon as it became more English, uh, toward the latter part of the century it started become, becoming like Schoharie, either with an I-E at the end, or a Y, or two R's, uh, even with a G-H in there somewhere, so you can see the variety of spellings there. Um, but what the creek was known as was really Tyonderogues Creek, sometimes called the Andalusia. And this derives from uh, the Mohawk village that was known as Tyanda Rogue, which was at the mouth of the Schoharie Creek, um, near the eventual site of Fort Hunter, um, as it flows, as the creek flows into the Mohawk. Um, now, it floods uh, periodically, as we know, uh, but people might be interested in knowing when the first documented flood actually happened in the Schoharie Valley. Um, at least when you put the words uh, or the description of a flood with actually seeing the Schoharie Valley um, in print. And this was in 1696. It was in the winter of 1695-1696. Um, this is when Nicholas Bayard owned the patent. He had had a correspondence with someone by the name of Robert Sanders from Albany uh, who apparently was um, helping to uh, kind of explore and also report back on the doings in the valley for uh, the patent holder, uh, Nicholas Bayard. And in that letter, uh, it was mentioned that there was overflow uh, in the creek and that the sand had covered the best land. So here we have 1696 talking about the first documented flood in the Schoharie Valley.